My thought process is, is that however I did something yesterday, I need to reevaluate it today. Like I don't even look back just one year, it's literally one day. So every time there's a new version of the software that comes out, my goal is, is to go figure out, okay, now how can I improve on whatever it is that I'm doing? There is a, a single feature which just jumps out and would automatically make someone update to 2024, and that's the, uh, the preview uh, dimension. Uh, it's going to dramatically reduce mouse clicks. It's going to make it much easier where you're not going up and, and, and looking for another tool to make a dimension. That tool alone, that feature alone, uh, should make anyone jump straight into 2024. The performance is amazing uh, for large assemblies. I brought uh, a couple models that were really big, giving our guys a lot of problems, and everything was flawless. I was really excited to see the changes made. It looks like they took a lot of feedback into priority from the community, and so I'm really thankful for that. It looks like there's just a lot more user-friendly changes made, and so a program that's already great is becoming greater, and so that really is an awesome thing with the latest update. Vast user interface improvements, the performance year to year goes up, background calculation stuff makes it so much easier to work with, and it makes it easier for uh, new users to get in and out and get their job done. There are a lot of things that I'm excited about. You're definitely making the things easier to work. <laughs> what makes me an impression, like changing the definitions, I think that's a great direction to go. Even I have old files which are done, uh, I call it fast and dirty. And now with these new features that I can repair relations, I think I will have a look on them and fix them really quickly. Instead, keep them in the corner. <laughs> The, the changes have been dramatic, um, certainly performance, speed, stability. The software is obviously constantly evolving, but it's, it's the little features which are added every year. It's the every time you click the mouse one time less, it's improvement on the, on the product. Welcome to What's New in SOLIDWORKS 2024. This episode is your place to take in the best of what's new inside the SOLIDWORKS 2024 release. So over the past two releases, over 200,000 viewers on YouTube alone have taken in the launch of SOLIDWORKS right here on SOLIDWORKS Live. So I want to start off by thanking you all for tuning in each year to learn how what's new in SOLIDWORKS can help you reimagine your designs. And this year, with SOLIDWORKS 2024, how are we helping you do that? By helping you work both smarter and faster, as you see in the lead-in teaser video for this episode of SOLIDWORKS Live. You know, each of the 2024 enhancements you will see unveiled today by our technical experts here at Dasso System will have those two things in common. So as we take a peek at the agenda for today's episode, you'll see a lot of familiar territory. You know, what's new in parts? what's new in user experience, uh, what's new in sheet metal, structures, drawings, uh, assemblies, as well as what's new in tools like SOLIDWORKS Visualize, right? That's right. Everything you now see uh, within a black bubble here is included with subscription in each new seat of SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD. And yes, I, I made no mistake there. This includes something called cloud services. So beginning just a couple of months ago, if you missed it, we launched one of the biggest, one of the largest enhancements to SOLIDWORKS in recent memory. That's right. Today, as we head into the release, 
of SOLIDWORKS 2024, each new seat of SOLIDWORKS on subscription includes, number one, the ability to share your 3D designs with anyone directly from SOLIDWORKS. Two, online storage that is purpose-built with CAD relationships and collaboration in mind. And three, full access to a suite of tools to help you manage engineering data, work through formal change actions and approvals, and keep project tasks in check. So all that. So for existing SOLIDWORKS users, uh, the stuff you see on screen, you can gain all of the same benefits by upgrading your subscription to include cloud services today at what is, frankly, a, a very low cost. But before we get into all of what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2024, I wanted to take a road often traveled, you know, a phrase that's probably uttered very frequently by our friends at Bowhead Corp, the creators of the amazing outdoor adaptive mobility devices you've likely been seeing all over social media for SOLIDWORKS 2024's launch recently. And that road takes me directly to SOLIDWORKS R&D. So SOLIDWORKS launch season, it is a fantastic time to check in with the R&D team here at SOLIDWORKS to hear about some of their recent priorities in, of course, helping our worldwide community of SOLIDWORKS users, you guys, actually work smarter and actually work faster by leveraging the abundance of features that we will see today. So let's take a look at my conversation with Senior R&D Director, John Sweeney. Hey, John, welcome to the What's New SOLIDWORKS 2024 edition of SOLIDWORKS Live. Hey, Sean, thank you, thank you very much. It's awesome having you. So I always like to bring you on before we get into the new features and the new enhancements to talk about probably the biggest year-to-year -year focus in every release, and that's our commitment to software quality, right? So, yep. you know, John, what would you like to tell our worldwide community on this topic of performance as we move towards the release of SOLIDWORKS 2024? Sure. Yeah. No, I, I'm. I'm. I'm always happy to come on and, and talk about this. You know, some people it's not the flashy stuff, but I think our users, you know, they 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 care about quality, obviously, and performance. You know, it's to sure. me, you know, as you receive software and you notice a difference in performance or quality, you know, I think that's a it's a great thing to be able to give to customers. So, you know, we we've been responding to to what they've been asking for, which is you know a couple of years ago more quality, and and we can see some of the discussions and some of the customers coming to us about performance with their massive assemblies or massive drawings. So. You know, we are we are working on it and it's um so we kicked off um and if i was at world last year and i talked a little bit about this so i'm repeating myself which is good because <laughs> it's honestly it's a multi-year initiative um we kicked it off you know maybe around the beginning of the year um so you know it's it's going to be a multi-year thing where it's going to be pulling in you know pretty much every development team uh in solidworks um and it's uh you know it's a two-prong approach one is kind of from a big picture standpoint, what can we do to make a big leap impact, like you know the moon landing kind of impact, right? Mm -hmm. Things like in the past it's been detailing mode or LDR edit mode or uh, you know the graphics, the render pipeline stuff that took multiple years. So big picture, you know, I challenged each of our core teams um, with delivering at least one big bang kind of thing. Um, and it could be a workflow change, a, a different way of doing things that gets more efficiency and performance for the customer um, or, you know, an architectural change. So, you know, fundamentally changing the code, right? Making the code do something different. Uh, so that's kind of the first approach. And we've got, some, we've got a great list of projects. We've done a couple of them already. Uh, some are in, 20, in SOLIDWORKS 2024, which is coming out um, in November. Uh, and then another, the list continues for, for our development period. We'll be trying to deliver some of them in service packs um, and then some of them in 2025, and we'll see how the work will continue. Uh, after that, it, it, should, it will continue. Uh, and then, the, you know, the second prong is, is more of a, like a pure code performance, like a, you know, at a singular level, command by command. Uh, and the, the cool thing about this, I, I really do like this, uh, this one because um, our PD team, Nick, um, took this. He's the he's the lead on the PD team. We have leaders in each team that are bringing you know together all the people, uh, regular weekly meetings. And Nick Nick took the um, this part of the initiative and laid out a dozen different workflows that cover you know the gamut from 
I'm, a, I'm coming into drawings. What do I do typically in drawings? Oh, I create mm -hmm. views, I add a section view, I do detailing, I switch sheets uh, and assembly. Again, 12 different workflows across, you know, what you might do with our products from simple stuff like switching windows or selecting on the screen or moving your mouse over the tree. So again, it covers kind of everything you might hit as a user in a, co in a common day. Wow. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, so it's really cool from that standpoint. So we're, and then we measured, uh, we have some assemblies. Uh, so you're seeing here a list of the assemblies we're using. So a couple images here, they're blurred out because they're actual customer models. We've blurred everything out. Sure. So, but there's some massive assemblies. There's, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80,000 components in some of these assemblies. So we wanted real world, big stuff that, that our customers are using and struggling with uh, in some of their operations. And again, we're using these models, you know, through these different workflows and measuring the time it takes for each discrete step, right? So undo operation or selection operation or whatever, switch, switch windows or open. Sure, stuff stuff we all do, right? Yeah, right. And and again, we've we've never we've never measured anything to that level. You know, the actual discrete step with multiple different machines, again on multiple different models, um, and then again at a discrete level, we're going into each one of those. And Nick kind of made his own kind of user based analysis of this seems too slow. So what wasn't mm. a technical analysis? It was gut feel for him, and he's a very experienced you know, person using SOLIDWORKS, he's one of our really good PD people, um, you know, his gut feel, is this fast enough? And when he thinks, nope, he says, nope, he puts a big red dot on it and he puts how many seconds or how much time he thinks that operation should take, you know, what should a user expect? Like, what would be the reasonable? So some of the times are, you know, there's some aggressive, uh, some aggressive targets. We have very aggressive targets on these dozen workflows. Um, but we've we just had a, our kind of kickoff meeting because we we were wrapping up the development for for Solver 2024 and kind of moving on to the FDs and the next dev cycle. So he gave an update of where we are, and it was it was fantastic. I mean, they, it's awesome. really encouraging to see what's already in Solver 2024, the progress we've made on some of these workflows and the aggressive targets. Um, so that's that's very encouraging. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's a long haul, you know. But we're, you know, this is this is something we've been doing for, you know, a long time with quality and performance focus. Yeah, it, it, it's hugely important, right? Um, you know, sometimes like as just like as you mentioned during these episodes, right? These what's new episodes, you hear about a lot of new features, right? Different modes, right? Maybe detailing mode, and those mm -hmm. are so flashy, right? They, they're they're things that you know you look out for when you when you upgrade to the the newest release, but. A lot of times there, there's so much work happening in the background uh, just to make this sort of common operations that by name have been in the software for forever, mm -hmm. but are used every single day in a variety of different capacities. Like you said, switching windows, using the undo command that you guys over in R&D are trying to make better year after year. Um, and I, I really love that we, you know, today we have so much data all the time at our fingertips, right? Uh, in every aspect of, of the world. Uh, but we still sort of have that human approach uh, to to development, right? Because yeah. it's, it's it's observable, right? Any software you're using, you can say, okay, this is performing up to my standards, or it isn't. Yeah. A lot of times, it could be an A or B choice. Yeah, and the one the one thing to I think to keep in mind from a from a customer standpoint is that we are always improving on stuff we've already delivered. So, and I I know because we had some customers in um, this summer that we were talking to about you know detailing mode, let's say. Oh, you know, we tried that. It didn't do what we wanted it to do. Mm. You know, that it's an example. That same as lightweight mode. You know, people that used it 10 years ago or detailing mode, they tried it the first <laughs> release. Sure. It has, you know, detailing mode has a lot more behavioral, you know, functionality in it now to support working in detailing mode. And it's it's crazy fast. So, you know, I encourage people to keep trying the new releases and try the, you know, if you had a functionality you didn't like, let us know about it for sure. But, you know, try it release to release, go back to it. It's a great point. And it kind of brings me to my next question, right? Which is this, this idea of uh, intake, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some people might think, hey, you know, software companies, they just develop software in a silo, right? They have ideas, they implement them, it's, it's done, right? But, you know, you and your team, you often mentioned there are really a variety of ways that, that we intake feedback, you know, directly contributing to 
overall software quality and and year to year year to year improvements like we've been saying and we recently held a, a solidworks 2024 preview event right at the yeah. america's headquarter in waltham how was that it was great um and you know you you started describing that the software company who who doesn't take feedback i'm like i would just it wouldn't be enjoyable like what do you, you want to release software and then <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> not get feedback and or not talk to people about what to do next I mean, this sounds horrible. So, you know, I think we really enjoy, it's a really fun part of our job, which I think, you know, people really appreciate, you know, on our side, and I suppose on the customer side as well, that, you know, talking to the customers, you know, getting, understanding, you know, what, what they're trying to do, what their struggles are each day. Hey, they're using our software to do this, you know, it, it works not like I expect, or it's you know too slow or whatever, you know, that's the stuff that, you know, energizes us um, and keeps us going and, and makes it again, fun to produce software. So yeah, the events, I mean, the events are phenomenal. I, I think we, I really look forward to them. I know the, the teams here look forward to it as well. We used to do a lot more, you know, before COVID and we're still, we're trying to get back to as much as we can, but um, yeah, the, we have two events in Waltham, you know, uh, the first week with a certain set of customers and another week with the SWUG and leaders. Uh, and it's great, you know, it's a lot, you know, some of the same people come back each year, which is nice. So you got the, the relationship that builds and then, you know, you go to the, the world's uh, three experience world, uh, typically in February and you get to see them again, which is nice. You get to kind of catch up at least twice a year. Um, so, yeah, it's really good. It's it's a good relationship and it's it's nice to, you know, for us to see they bring their models with them. So it's, us, it's nice for us to see their actual workflows, you know, working with the software standing behind them. That was uh that was one of the coolest things I I saw uh from some of the footage that, that you guys are seeing actually as you're watching this. Uh so Brad Meador, for example, from uh from Altec, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he had he had his trucks up. Uh Kara Tucker from Gibson uh, had right. some of her gu guitar models. Yeah. Uh Sankit Patil, who you guys have seen the stuff he works on every day with right. the uh the Bowhead RX bikes. But uh yeah, so you guys probably saw a really wide mixture. Of uh, of different types of assemblies and parts and drawings to, uh, to yeah, there's a lot of different <laughs> industries, a lot of different industries industries covered in the in the two meetings we had with customers for sure. Yeah. So cool. Well, John, I always like to again, I I love to have you on before we get to the new stuff because we have to. I think we have to remind, and, and I know our our community loves hearing it that just how much effort and thought, um, you know, that we put into uh, just just keeping the software performing uh, at the high up standard. Uh, that our users have. So thank you so much for for joining our What's New in SolidWorks 2024 episode of SolidWorks Live. All right, sure. Thanks, Sean. All right, everyone, the time has come. What's new in SolidWorks 2024 parts and user experience? So this is almost always the first section we get into during SolidWorks launch episodes since it affects almost everyone who uses SolidWorks to design, right? And joining us today to unveil the very best of what's new in SolidWorks parts and user experience is Mark Peterson. Mark, welcome to SolidWorks Live. Hey, Sean. I'm happy to be here again. Thanks. Absolutely, man. So, Mark, what are some ways SolidWorks users can design their parts smarter and faster inside SolidWorks 2024? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's get right into it. I mean, there's... um. You know, we have that Bowhead RX uh, uh, data set, and we'll just start with that um, and just use that to illustrate some of these points here. So uh, what I want to do is um, just go ahead and open up, uh, you know, this little pedal axle here to start off with, um, and we're going to get right into this. So, you know, this is like a turn part, and I'm going to kind of rewind a little bit on this component, just kind of show you how I did that last step. We have this nice little profile here, and uh, I want to cut the outside of this profile as sort of a revolve. And normally in SolidWorks, we create that as a separate solid body and then do a Boolean operation. Um, but in SolidWorks 2024, you can work a lot faster this way by just simply selecting this checkbox in the cut revolve option that lets you flip the side to cut. So now I can cut that exterior uh, portion of that component. And uh, instead of having to do those multiple steps like I was doing in the past. Um, now, 
you know, there's also, you know, a component, like I said, it was turned. So we, we want to maybe have an idea of what sort of bar stock is going to be required uh, for this. And in SOLIDWORKS 2024, we now have the option uh, to use a cylindrical bounding box instead of just rectangular. Um, and of course, you we still maintain the ability uh, to choose a particular plane, you know, if you want to specify a particular direction for the axis of that, uh, of that cylindrical bounding box. Um, now this shows up in your feature manager tree at the top, of course, as you would expect, and then it also, um, you know, makes the, the properties of this bounding box available uh, in your custom properties as well. Moving back to that top level assembly, uh, you know, we have this uh, component here. Uh, where we want to kind of test out some different lightweighting options. So here we saw the pockets that we created in there, um, but we also have this option here, these triangular cutouts that go through the component. Um, now, as you notice, these are just in the center of the part. We need to pattern these in both directions. So we're going to do the sort of normal patterning operations, select a particular direction, choose the feature that we'd like to linear pattern. Um, let me just kind of change my view here so we can see this a little better. And uh, yeah, we'll just input our parameters, um, you know, to set it up how we'd like to, um, you know, set the instances and spacing like usual. Now, the next step here would be to select a parallel direction and then re-input those same parameters um, like we did before. And then obviously check pattern seed only. And this wasn't difficult, but it was just something where it was maybe a little less um, expedient. So now we've made that process a lot more succinct by being able to pattern uh, in both directions uh, with just a single checkbox there. Um, I want to zoom into this component here as well. This is a little chain guard. It's connected to this uh, gearbox uh, at three bolt hole locations, which is a little unusual. Usually, you know, we have four. So, you know, I've created this rectangular um, sketch profile here, and, you know, we want to create these M6 countersink holes using, of course, Hole Wizard. There's no better way to do it. And uh, when we go to our Positions tab, instead of selecting a plane and picking points, we can now select that rectangular sketch, and Solver is going to add an instance at each endpoint of that solid geometry, as well as the construction geometry if you choose to do so. But I think my favorite aspect of this particular new enhancement is the ability to skip instances. So like I showed earlier, you know, we only really need those three bolt hole instances. We don't need all four. And so just like that, I can remove one, and uh, it's going to fit into my gearbox exactly the way that I want to. So, you know, these are just a few of the enhancements. Of course, we can't go over everything, um, but I think, you know, real quickly, we were able to show just how much faster and smarter uh, you can work with SOLIDWORKS 2024. There you go. Look at you using the themes appropriately. Smarter and faster, right? Right, Mark? Yeah, I was uh, right. I was actually just checking out the chat uh, here. And yeah, so I see uh, Flip Flop Adventures uh, saying, I agree that is long overdue. Uh, in reference to Andrew Gross's praise of flip side the cut, so definitely some fans of the new enhancements here, which is yeah. which is awesome. And the name checks out, so <laughs> yes, I agree. It's almost like we planned them there, which we I promise we didn't. Uh, <laughs> and I, it's funny I didn't even catch that when I when I read it. Um, but um, yeah, Mark, you know I mentioned earlier we we start off with with parts usually because you know they're 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 fundamental building blocks of of any. SOLIDWORKS assembly or drawing that any of you might be working on. But if you take a step back further, right, underpinning all three of those is is the the user experience, right? Which is what John talked about just a moment ago, the of the software itself, you know, how the how the software performs, how flexible our users can design and and work overall by using SOLIDWORKS. So, you know, what are some ways we've we've enhanced the user experience inside of SOLIDWORKS 2024? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. Just like you and uh, John were talking about earlier. I mean, I, I like to start with performance. I think I talk about this a lot every year because basically, you know, our R&D and development champions over there are just doing great work and you get free performance upgrades. So this year we're extending that, uh, that performance pipeline uh, checkbox by allowing you to um, accelerate the silhouette edges this time. So in this particular example, like on my laptop, it's about three times as fast, but on like a tower computer, it, might, it could be a lot faster than that. So anything that's rendering silhouette edges, you're going to be a lot faster with that checkbox enabled. Um, and so here's some other things like in Sketcher. This is, uh, I showed this earlier, but this is how I actually created that sketch. Just a quick rectangle, nothing super special. Normally from this point, you would go to the Smart Dimension tool, either on the Command Manager or some other way. But in 2024, you're going to do it differently. You're simply going to select 
uh, an uh, entity, and then you get this old pop-up, this old gray pop-up. If you check that pop-up, uh, you can now enter a smart dimension. That's a true smart dimension there. And it doesn't work with just single entities. So for example, if I wanted to do a control select between this vertical line and this angled line, check that out. I get to create an angled dimension as well right there. No need to start that uh, smart dimension tool. It's important to know that this doesn't interfere with any of the already existing uh, productivity tools and enhancements like this uh, context sensitive toolbox toolbar, which allows me to, of course, set these lines equal to each other to make a square. So that's a pretty incredible enhancement. It's something that we're all going to be able to use every day. Um, now, going back, going back to this pedal axle, I did say this was turn part. And, you know, a lot of times we're working with other, uh, you know, companies to manufacture these things for us. And sometimes they need a different coordinate system. Um, and the, the origin that we build in SOLIDWORKS isn't necessarily useful for them. Now, if I'm going to save this out as a step file, that coordinate system I just created, I'm, I want, may want to use that as the default coordinate system when I send that to my partners. So here in SOLIDWORKS 2024 in the Save As dialog, you now have an option to specify which coordinate system you would like to use when you save that out. Um, and just to validate that, let me just open up the uh, step file real quick. Um, and we can see that here, when I turn on the origin, of course, we can see that in the view. Just rotate that around so we can see a little better. It's right there exactly where I expect it to be. Um, and so that's a, a huge improvement. And I know, especially when we're working with uh, people outside of our organization, that's going to be uh, something that people are going to use a lot. So, Yeah, so, so many good ones right there. I, I think my personal favorite is being able to select the sketch dimension preview. Um, which I, I think is something that that SolidWorks actually SolidWorks 3D CAD on on desktop we, we actually uh, sort of borrowed I guess you could say from from the X apps right uh, just being able to select on a on a segment and then select a dimension from that without having to do the smart dimension that's that's super super cool yeah we had that in 3D Creator and I mean you know bringing that over into SolidWorks was a no brainer. Um, and I think that's uh, incredible. It's really going to streamline a lot of sketch creation, especially because it's not just single entities or anything like that. You can do multiple entities. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of um, utility in that one particular enhancement. I know everybody's going to have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So, Mark, I that was assuredly a compliment uh, to the stuff you showed there. But now I'm going to give you an accusation. Uh, <laughs> I think I think you are holding on to me. You know, I, I've read I've read the What's New doc for 2024. I, I produced three what's new uh, overview videos with 60 plus enhancements in them, uh, which you can see right now at solidworks.com slash what's new. Um, you know, things like specifying a coordinate system during save as, super nice, but you seem to have missed a huge save as located enhancement in SolidWorks 2024. Any idea what I'm talking about there? Uh, I think so. You and any of our other Eagle Eye um, attendees today probably <laughs> have noticed when I was uh, selecting that save as type drop down. There was um, an option for previous SolidWorks annual releases. So let's head back to that um, that component that we were just looking at, and again, just go to File Save As, and in that Save As Type dialog up there near the top, we're going to see SolidWorks 2022 and 2023. So in SolidWorks 2024 and beyond, you're going to be able to save back to two annual releases. Um, so here, I'll just save it to SolidWorks 2022. Um, of course, you can add a prefix or rename it, whatever you need to do, of course. Um, and now let me just switch over here to my SolidWorks 2022. And um, it's just as easy as, you know, using the regular open or drag and drop, whichever way you want to open those. And it opens up exactly as you would expect. Um, and the feature tree over there on the um, left-hand side is completely intact. It's not a neutral format. It is a true SolidWorks file. So cool. Uh, just, I was just checking in on YouTube here, uh, the number of concurrence uh, just spiked as soon as you started coming into that. Uh, I know we, we've talked about it internally here for, for quite a while, uh, but this is a, an enhancement. Uh, I know of a fr friend of the show, Jeremy Regnaris, you know, he mentioned he's in the chat. Uh, this is an enhancement that, that we, our users have been you know asking for for years. So uh, we're, we're so happy uh, to be able to show it off to you guys today. But uh, Mark, thank you so much for, for jumping on today. So for everyone watching, uh, where can they see more great enhancements like save as previous release arriving with the release of SOLIDWORKS 2024? 
Yeah, so you did mention the uh, website. So uh, solidworks.com slash what's new, head over there, check it out. Um, a lot of great information over there. Um, and, you know, a lot of these these videos and a lot of the enhancements, um, all of those will be here um, at this website, um, as well as the, as going into, you know, what are some enhancements uh, outside of just the SolidWorks core software? Like, so for uh, our 3D experience uh, products and 3D experience platform, um, you know, you may want to evaluate those, check those out, see what those are all about. But I would highly encourage you just at the top of the page, uh, click on this button to find an event and then use these filters on the left hand side just kind of filter down to your region and filter down to type of uh, SolidWorks what's new 2024 event and uh, definitely check these out if there's a if there's an event uh, in your area please please uh, see if you can make it to that um, you know this is something that our, our our partners put on and they do an amazing job it's a great uh, opportunity to just kind of um, you know hang out with other SolidWorks users, understand like what more about what's going on in uh, the SolidWorks software, but also a lot of other things. They bring a, a lot of other technology um, and, uh, and that sort of stuff to these events as well. Uh, I'll definitely be going. And so um, I'm gonna do some here in the US. And so, you know, hopefully I'll, I'll see you at one of these events. Yeah, hopefully, um, you know, Mark, uh, so that, that a lot of great filters on that page as well. Um, so even if you aren't close by to an event, uh, which you, you most likely are. Uh, definitely recommend you guys get out in person. Uh, you can look at virtual events too, right? Uh, which is yeah. which is which is awesome. Um, I, I do see uh, in the chat Scott Wheeler saying uh, need to integrate need to integrate uh, two prior release function in Pack and Go utility. So we might talk about that later. Uh, so we definitely might. definitely stay tuned, Scott. Uh, but but Mark, once again, thank you so much for jumping on here at SolidWorks Live. Thanks, Sean. All right, everyone, you know, uh, the truth is, and and I know John mentioned this earlier, you know, Sol SolidWorks, the the software and, and you know, every every piece of software that we create, right, it, it can't improve in a vacuum. You know, we have we have a great R&D team, of course, headed by John Sweeney and others, but it takes multiple ingredients to guide the direction of improvements to SolidWorks work, workflows. So you think about, you know, community ideas and engagement. Uh, new manufacturing methods and more, you know, all these things and more, they, they contribute to what we create and how we create when it comes to the goal of helping you work smarter and faster within SolidWorks. And this brings us directly to our next topic, next gen design, namely smarter, faster ways to improve the ways that you design within SolidWorks with all of the aforementioned in mind. And to show us the power of these next-gen design workflows in 2024, I'd like to welcome on Noah Zeef. Noah, welcome to this What's New episode of SolidWorks Live. Thanks, Sean. Happy to be here. For sure, man. So, you know, one major question I would have if I was a viewer today is if I can already do what you're about to show us inside of SolidWorks 3D CAD today, which is namely, you know, make awesome-looking 3D shapes. Uh, why are we showing uh, our audience any of this today? Great question. And the answer is yes, you can still do all of this in SolidWorks, but continuing on with those themes that you mentioned, that Mark mentioned, you can now do it just a lot faster, a lot smarter, a lot more efficiently. And you can do that specifically with our cloud apps, X Shape and X Generative Design. So, firstly, with X Shape, creating ergonomic curves and freeform geometry is as simple as pushing and pulling parts of your model. You don't need to use all those complex servicing tools. Um, really just uh, using all of these vertices, edges, and faces allows you to create any ergonomic shape. And with updates we introduced this year, like working zone and soft selection, selecting any of those vertices, edges, and faces is now simpler than ever. And uh, in addition to this, uh, with X generative design, you can now use algorithmic modeling on the cloud still, uh, which is becoming more and more popular for digital designers. And it just gives them more control over their design geometry. So we used it with this handle here to add a complex surface, complex pattern. And to any seasoned SolidWorks user, they would know that creating this pattern in typical parametric software would take a lot of time. You need a lot of planes, a lot of sketches, and really just a lot of patience. Uh, but here you create, you can create it in just a couple clicks. So Yes, again, all these things you can do in SolidWorks, but now you can do it much faster with our additional cloud capabilities. 
Yeah, and it's something that you and I, I know we we've talked about, um, you know, just off to the side that you know, in in a, in a in a certain CAD software, right? You can make almost, especially within SolidWorks, right? You can make almost any kind of shape, but questions like how long will it take you to create that shape? Will the shape be editable, <laughs> like um, in in a, in a way that is practical? Uh, do you have to be the top one percent of of SolidWorks designers to be able to make these sorts of shapes? Um, those things are very pertinent questions, I think. Uh, so really, like you said, faster and smarter, but I think we're also enabling, um, I think a whole host of other uh, designers uh, to to be able to create these, these beautiful uh, types of devices and products. Um, so, you know, with that said, I, just, you know, beautiful looking stuff just now, but can you maybe take us through a bit more how you designed uh, again, once again, these these beautiful handles to give us a sense of what that design process would actually look and feel like. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I mentioned, we used uh, X generative design to create these complex handles, and uh, the process for an algorithmic software like this is similar in some ways to a traditional parametric software like SolidWorks, but it's also very different in other ways. You do have commands that are executed in an order, like a design tree or a design manager. But here they're called operators and they could be connected in a kind of visual graphical interface. It's kind of like connecting the dots of different operations. And also a lot of these operations will be familiar to parametric users. So for example, to create this pattern, I use the thicken, offset, and Boolean operators. These are all commands that SOLIDWORKS users have probably used before. But the difference here is those commands are algorithmically based which essentially just means we have more control over their output. So the triangulate command that I used to split this surface into all these triangles, uh, all the vertices, edges, and faces that are output from that operation are completely editable. So it's kind of like generating a 3D sketch that you can use to create almost any pattern you can imagine. So I see here, you know, Clearly, clearly a lot of uh, outside of SolidWorks uh, design, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure people here in the chat, you know, they're they're wondering, you know, how exactly do we get these designs into our SolidWorks assemblies? And and what about drawings, right? We have to manufacture these eventually. Can we can we annotate? Can we dimension uh, these these models for uh, within drawings for uh, for manufacturing? Uh, so yes, yeah, so do not fear for all of our SolidWorks uh, <laughs> users. This is all made to uh, work with, um, you know, traditional uh, desktop and and uh, connected uh, SolidWorks software. So SolidWorks can actually read the geometry from X shape and X generative design. So whenever you use those applications, you could bring those parts uh, into your SolidWorks session. Um, here, for example, I'm bringing in that complex pattern handle that we made with X generative design. And we can use it just to create a standard SOLIDWORKS drawing. And because this is um, not a graphics body, this is not you know, a mesh, this is, these are 3D details that could be referenced and annotated for all your manufacturing needs. Also, it's important to note all of these parts are mateable. So you can bring this into SOLIDWORKS and add parametric features either with desktop SOLIDWORKS or with um, 3D Creator that Mark mentions, X-Design. And you could make that with a completely SOLIDWORKS-based assembly. So even though we're introducing a lot of new design functionality on the cloud, it can all still be applied to traditional model modeling methods that our customers are used to. Super cool. So Noah, it seems uh, it seemed to me uh, that a large bulk of the, the body design here uh, within those handles was done with the neck shape, right? You mentioned uh, the X apps, uh, you know, the part design tool, namely with the neck shape that allows you to sort of push and pull and combine shapes. Is there is there anywhere viewers can go today to get a deeper look at what X shape is capable of? And uh, once again, what it feels like to, to use it. Definitely. We have a great resource that we recently uploaded to YouTube. It's a playlist of basically how to create a bunch of uh, models in X shape. And you could find it. In a, we'll share the link in the chat. It's solveworks.com slash made in X shape slash playlist. And it's a great place to start with subdivision modeling. If you're brand new to it, if you want to, you know, learn intermediate commands, advanced commands, it really has a little bit of everything. We have about six workflows uploaded now. 
and we're going to be growing. Uh, we're going to add four in the coming months. So we strongly encourage everyone to go through those workflows, get a better feel for sculpting, and hopefully, you know, it'll empower users to add a little flair to their models and incorporate some ergonomic ergonomic shapes. Super cool. Well, Noah, uh, my my next uh, my next request for you is to check out the chat. You have tons of questions in the the SolidWorks live chat right now. Uh, just tons of curiosity and interest uh, about what they've what our viewers uh, have seen. And thank you all so much for asking questions and making remarks there. Uh, but but Noah, to you, thank you so much for joining us here in SolidWorks Live to show uh, us how you know you can use these amazing next gen design workflows, uh, which we also learned right can work in complementary fashion with SolidWorks 3D CAD. We appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. For sure. You know, when, when you tune into yearly What's New episodes of SolidWorks Live, I think you rightfully expect to see a lot of additions to SolidWorks. But, you know, sometimes technology is less about what is being added and more about what is being removed. And this next area, although we have added a whole lot of capability to SolidWorks subscription with it, is a great example of this concept. You know, simply put, what you are about to see with cloud services has the promise to remove the everyday friction associated with file management and design sharing. And to help us understand this huge shift here at SolidWorks and how it'll help you work smarter and faster, let's welcome on Steve Fick. Steve, welcome to SolidWorks Live. Thanks, Sean. I'm uh, I'm realizing that you you stacked me up against a very hard act to follow here with all that cool stuff that Noah just uh, just showed. <laughs> but nevertheless, we're uh, we're gonna make this happen for sure. Hey, uh, do not do not sell yourself short. There is a lot more you can do uh, with your 3D files and your 2D files uh, as well uh, with with the power of cloud services, right? So, Steve, right as I as I understand it, we've we've very recently added some of these really awesome capabilities heading into 2024 to share, store, and or manage our projects from inside of SolidWorks. You know, these are these are some game changers, right? When it comes to just overall user experience within the software. Can you talk us through what we've added in this area of SolidWorks today? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, joking aside, we really are excited <laughs> about uh, some of these, all these very cool features that are part of cloud services. And I would say first and foremost, we're excited to introduce this idea of being able to share your designs with anyone right from within inside of SolidWorks. So, you know, just Click a button, share a file, indicate who you want to share it with. Um, an email gets generated uh, and your supplier, your internal colleague just simply clicks the link and they open the design in a browser. And what's really phenomenal about this is they can, they can add measurements, they can draw right on it, they can um, comment and then send it right back to you. And as a SolidWorks user, you're facilitating this all in the task pane. Not only that, but for customers who are looking to actually really store and manage their designs on the cloud, you know, you can you can see what uh, impact a change is going to have. You can have the flexibility to move your designs around in session into different folders and reorganize them. And you can have the ability to revise and collaborate on your designs as well. So uh, no shortage of like very powerful, very... Um, I'll say accessible capabilities for the the SolidWorks user uh, for their day to day capability or day to day uh, needs. Yeah, the word you use there, capability. Like I, I saw right there, just a lot of capability with what you showed us today. But you know, on the other side of that, I, I feel you know maybe it can feel like a lot of commitment, right? And and maybe a lot of change from the way that the ways that we probably work today if we haven't downloaded this new feature set yet into our SolidWorks, does that kind of seem reasonable? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's fair. I think you bring up a good point. First off, you know, starting in this past July, uh, every new purchase of SolidWorks with subscription has cloud services. So if, if you've made that purchase, you can enable it, download it and start using it. But I would say to your point, um, you know, when we, when we try to, to, start making our customers aware of this, we wanted it to be very accessible, meaning you may look at it and say, you know, really all we want is kind of that modern version of, of e-drawings, of being able to share a design and to uh, collaborate without having to download viewers and things like that. And that's a perfectly 
a great place to start with cloud services. But you also may look at it and say, you know, we've been thinking about a better way to store our designs. We, you know, revisions have been a challenge. We're tired of moving files around in different folders just to indicate they're released. You know, all, you know, all those kinds of like things that come along with design that just aren't all that fun, to be honest. <laughs> um, you know, that's a great place to start with cloud services as well. And so you may look at it and say, those are all things we want. Or you may say, this is just specifically what we're interested in. And it should be very accessible from that standpoint to just to get started. I see uh, Jeff saying, and this is this is kind of a funny use case, uh, this, but uh, when this first came out, I tried share a file with my mom. She's in her 70s and doesn't know what a browser is, yet she was able to open a 3D model and spin it around on her iPad within minutes. Uh, very interesting story, Jeff. <laughs> But it, it's true, right? You don't you don't need uh, you don't it, it, of course uh, downloadable downloadable viewers. Um, you know, eDrawings is great, but you do not need a download downloadable viewer, and you could use it on any device, right? Use it on a traditional PC, uh, MacBook, uh, an iPad, as Jeff mentioned. So, so very cool. Um, you know, but Steve, uh, just to be totally clear, right? Uh, the in in software action that we saw, you know, the button for share a file. Uh, what we saw, you know, you reorganizing projects, uh, badging revisions, all that. Uh, this works with your existing installation of SOLIDWORKS, right? This isn't like a totally different uh, product or anything. Yeah, no, that's right. In fact, it it works with, you know, one of the things I would say is we we realize that um, there's often a offset between when we launch a product and when you actually, as a customer, are going to upgrade to the latest release. So what's nice about this is it does, it works 100% with 2023. Um, if you have existing subscription, you can work with your reseller to, to modify it or upgrade it so that you can have access to it. And uh, and then like you mentioned as well, any new release is gonna is obviously gonna have it uh, as part of it. But um, yeah, it, it, it fits this nice uh, uh, area where, yeah, if you're still on 2023, you can you can leverage cloud services. If it looks interesting to you, very cool. All right, so that that brings me to to really my my final question here, Steve. You know, where can I go to learn more about how to activate and access cloud services inside of SolidWorks today? So a very key part of how we wanted to roll this was out was to make it hopefully um, very easy and accessible to you as our customers. So there's a landing page uh, as part of the landing page where you can go in and see exactly how to get started step by step. And we broke it down by those key areas that you may also be interested in trying. So if you just simply wanna try the uh, share and markup functionality, there's a targeted set of steps to get you started and, and off and running with that. So that's, that's a great place to start. Obviously your reseller is going to be a, another great resource to leverage as well. And you know, just to plug their events, but there's no doubt that there'll be lots of, of content around <laughs> cloud services for the what's new events as well. For sure. Uh, and just like Mark mentioned, right? SolidWorks.com slash what's new, uh, that top blue, uh, blue bar, that blue banner, find an event. It's right there. So, yep. uh, Steve, thank you so much for, for joining us here on SolidWorks live. So, so excited for cloud services. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. All right, so like Steve sort of joked, uh, we are going back to 3D, everyone, <laughs> which I know is is what we're all so excited about, of course. Um, and with sheet metal and structures in SolidWorks 2024, I am absolutely confident that you will see a number of new SolidWorks features that you are going to love. And joining us to unveil the best of what's new in sheet metal and structures in SolidWorks 2024, filling in, by the way, for the incredible... Andrew Gross today is Brad Williamson. Brad, welcome to SolidWorks Live. Hey, thanks, Sean. Absolutely. So, Brad, let's let's start with sheet metal design. You know, I'm really excited to cover this topic because we have some some net new features in SolidWorks 2024 to show off, right? Yeah, quite a few new features. So, I've got a demo put together here that's going to string uh, several of them all in one shot that I can I can explain here. So, let's um, let's take a look here. Um, I've built up this cargo carrier for our bowhead cycle. And this is uh, this is composed of some weldments and some sheet metal. We've got this liner that's composed of some sheet metal walls with some tab and slot features that will eventually weld up. Now, the first thing we need to do is take this uh, long 
vertical wall here and just get a copy of it, another instance of it. And so I'm just going to use copy with mates. That's nothing new, but that's just the quickest way to get a new instance over there. Now, this was assembled with tab and slot features, but you see when, the, when I assemble that new instance, um, I don't have the slots already cut out. So what's new in Sheet Metal for 2024 is this new propagate slots option. So it's going to take the, uh, from looking at that parent instance, it's going to propagate all the tab and slot features uh, to those adjacent parts. So now everything's uh, everything's all, all set up. We don't have to make any manual cuts and that thing's ready to weld up. So now let's look at this bottom plate of the, the liner. And you can see I've got this closed sketch here. What's new is I can take that closed sketch and use the new sketch-based stamp tool. Now, this is great. We we had really good, robust uh, forming tool options previously, but what this really lets me do is just on the fly. It's super flexible. I can use any sketch. Then I just enter the parameters for the draft and the radius and so forth. One more real quick one here. The rip feature, which has been around for a while, but we've extended the utility of the rip feature to where I can now unfold conical and cylindrical parts. I just have to pick a circular edge and a reference point. And it does the work for me of creating that thin saw cut sketch or saw, saw cut feature. So now I can unroll any cylindrical or conical feature without the manual cut that would have been required previously. So really nice, some big, big uh, workflow improvements there. I'm just recalling, Brad, when we when we showcased a lot of our what's new materials to our our, our reseller partners, right uh, around the globe, as we've been discussing. Uh, I remember the the stamp tool, the stamp feature was yeah. was maybe one of the uh, let's say top five uh, favorite features. I think, and I know you know all of you here in the chat, you know, of course, seeing the buzz here. Yeah. Uh, whenever we have a new SolidWorks feature, like a new name, new icon, you know, something something new to use, especially on the design end. Uh, it it always tends to to be a hit. Um, so that's, yeah. that's awesome. I mean, we've had we've had forming tools for a really long time, and they're sure. they're great. They're really robust, but they do require some setup. Yeah. And what we get now with this sketch based tool is you just draw it and and stamp it. Really cool. Very cool. So Brad, uh, this section, of course, it's sheet metal and structures, right? Another area where we've made some great enhancements inside of SolidWorks 2024 to help users design smarter and faster is within structure systems. So, totally. you know, Brad, what do we, what do we have to show there today? Yeah. Well, going back to our, our carrier here, you know, a lot of times where, where you have sheet metal, you also have weldments. So let's build up a, a frame to go around that sheet metal liner. And uh, what I'm going to start with here are just some reference surfaces. I've got a couple of flat surfaces and some reference planes that you're going to see here in a minute. So I'll go into structure systems and I'm just going to highlight uh, box select these two reference surfaces, which is going to attach my square tube profile to the outer edges of those surfaces. And then I, I don't want this upper one here, so I'll just click on that and remove it. So those are my primary members. Now, pro tip here, you can hit the letter Q and it'll show any hidden reference planes. And this is going to let me skip the sketch and use these planes for, um, for creating these secondary members. It's actually going to intersect those planes with the primary members and look how quickly it lays in those secondary members. So that's really nice. And while I'm still in the edit mode here, I can go back and just selectively remove any ones that I don't want. There we go. Okay. So now last year, let's look at the corner treatments because last year we introduced this way of grouping similar corners based on a selected reference. Well, what's new in 2024 is SolidWorks now automatically detects those similar corners. So you're going to see the little six little post-it flags there, identifying that it, the six open corners. Now I can just go in and toggle through my corner treatment option for butt, miter, and this new open corner option, which is really cool here because you don't always have to weld stuff. I mean, if you ever use aluminum extrusion, you might just want a plastic uh, corner connector. So now we can put all those corners together uh, with that, that new open corner uh, connection feature. And one last one, this isn't really unique to weldments, but I really like this enhancement. When you go into custom properties, you can now assign units to your length and mass and so forth. So for your cut list, you know, I can put a length. Uh, we could go back into our weight property for the structure and assign units to that. And it just takes whatever your document property units are. Here it's grams. Okay, so there we go. It's made it a little bit smarter. But check this out. If I change the units, pro tip down in the lower right corner, you can change the document units. Let's go to MKS. And you go right back to your custom properties and you see how it's updated to kilograms. So 
great application anytime you're using custom properties for your cut lists, for your bills of materials, notes and drawings, et cetera. It's just made everything just uh, so much smarter. For sure. Hey, Brad, I'm just checking in on the chat. Uh, I see FunFam. Uh, that's the username there. Uh, the, the forming tools set up has been a barrier of adoption. I can't wait to try out the new sketch method. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very mm -hmm. neat. Uh, so Brad, you know, we just saw, uh, we just saw Steve Fick come on and he talked about cloud services, which we're all very excited about, right? Some great new features there. Mm -hmm. uh, so just out of curiosity here, right? We're, we just, we were just talking about sheet metal. Let's say I'm doing sheet metal fabrication. Uh, you know, what are, what are some practical examples of, of workflows that cloud services and that sort of example will make feel smarter and faster for us as SOLIDWORKS users moving forward? Okay. Well, if you're making sheet metal parts um, and you're not cutting them yourself, then you got to send them out to a fabricator. So easiest way to do that now with cloud services is just through the share a file that Steve just showed us. So right from within SOLIDWORKS, uh, I can take my flat pattern drawing and save that out as a DXF or DWG. Actually, I don't even have to save it out. Cloud Services is going to convert it for me and share that through a secure link. Or if I want to specify a, a unique email address, it'll send it to that person. And on their end, they don't have to download any software. They get a secure link to the document. They can download it. They can view it. They can mark it up. All the conversation history is carried across with the part. And best of all, I didn't have to leave SolidWorks to save out a file to locate it, attach it, send it through whatever method. It was all done for me right there in SolidWorks. Yeah, super, super swift, super simple. Uh, yeah. So that that was awesome to see what's new in, in sheet metal uh, structures, you know, of course, to see a, a very pertinent example, uh, one I'm sure a lot of us will go through uh, here in the future uh, with, with sheet metal within cloud services, for example. Uh, but, but shifting gears uh, just a little bit, you know, earlier in this, SolidWorks Live episode for SolidWorks 2024. You might remember I mentioned that almost everyone interacts with parts inside SolidWorks 2024. But you know, you think about it with products like like DraftSite getting used by more and more 2D drafters and designers, and and the enhancements I think you're about to show inside SolidWorks in 20 SolidWorks drawings in 2024. I'm thinking that our community, our viewers today, they're probably going to be pretty excited uh, about working with 2D files in 2024. All the same, right? Oh man, drawings are always so popular for when we come out with enhancements. There's a lot of enhancements here. Um, I've strung together some highlight reel style demos here just because there are so many things that I want to pack in. Um, so let's have a look. Um, when you talk about drawings, you know, first thing that comes to mind a lot of times is dimensioning. So something new that we've done in 2024 is with chain dimensioning. So chain dimensions are great when you want to create this linear sequence of dimensions that are all relative to each other. What's new is that these dimensions come in auto-aligned. So no more manual steps there. But better yet, the text will offset itself whenever it's in too tight a spot that it won't fit between the dimension arrows. And the same goes for the arrows themselves. If it's too tight a spot, it'll automatically get replaced with either dots or slashes. So that's a, that's a huge time saver and really saves a, a bunch of manual steps of having to go back and, and uh, manually align those. Yeah. Um, anyone who's used drawings would say, right, that just like you said, that that'll probably save a lot of of manual formatting steps. Uh, which, so that's great. Those those are some really great enhancements. What else do we have for uh, for drawings, Brad? Yeah, staying on that same drawing, actually, there's a couple more kind of quick hitters here. Um, the first one you'll notice here when I start to hover over any dimension, it now highlights in orange whatever the attachment points are. Now, we've done this forever in parts and assemblies, but it's new to drawings, and it's especially useful when you have a really busy view. Um, here's one more. Have you ever needed to manually override a dimension? Yeah, kind of like you're you're showing there, right? It's yeah. it's right within the the property manager. Yeah, yeah, we've been able to do that for a while. But what's new is you can now show that in a highlighted color, which is really going to cut down on any kind of manual uh, mistakes. Um, and then the cool thing is, if you want to revert back to the original values, it's just right in the in the right click menus there. So very nice. Um, you know, it's maybe not a best practice to manually override a dimension, but there are going to be times where you just got to quickly one-off something. And this is going to be a good tool for that. 
Yeah, it's kind of like overriding a bill of materials, right? It it, it comes mm -hmm. up. It, the question comes up. Um, yeah. You know, the, the colors thing makes me a little bit nervous, though, uh, personally, yeah. you know, because sometimes, right, maybe purple's already color that's that, that's been customized. You know, okay. our, our Solaris users out there, uh, you know, in the chat and around the world, you customize your interface. Uh, so so can you control the color uh, that that is uh, used for overridden dimensions? Okay, so yeah, there's a couple things there. The first is there's a document level option of whether you want to display the color at all. And then second, of course, um, through the system options, we give you the ability to specify what color you want that override to be. So if you have your own custom color schemes, no problem. This is going to fit right into that. Very cool. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> so, you know, doing a little bit of a callback to earlier in this episode, you know, we saw Mark, Mark Peterson, uh, you know, he revealed uh, this really new, uh, it's really neat new capability, you know, that enhancement that allows Solaris users to save files as a previous release so yeah. that they can be natively opened and edited. And of course, Mark was reviewing parts, right? So, so we saw a part example of that. Yeah. Uh, does this new enhancement apply to drawings files as well? Uh, of course it does. <laughs> they wouldn't do that to us, right? Yeah, this is great. When we, uh, when we do the save as previous for drawings, it works pretty much the same. It's just under the save as command, but uh, behaves... There's, there's a couple more considerations. Um, so what happens when we have a drawing is when we do the save as, it's going to automatically gather up the references that are required for that drawing, whether they be parts or sub-assemblies. And uh, what's nice here is it gives us an option to name the file with either a prefix or suffix, or I can hit that advance button there and do granular naming or location. So that's and I think that's really important because we, we do know that a lot of users have to interact and share data with uh, customers or suppliers that are on previous versions. But when you're saving out these prior release drawings, uh, I think you want to be careful about the naming and maybe maybe name them something different, maybe store them in a different directory. It's probably a good best practice there. So you don't intermix your production drawings with the uh, with the previous release. Makes total sense, and that that seems like a good a good best practice for me. Um, you know, as I continue to wrap my mind around this new feature, you know, one thing I I think of is is you know what if you, you know, you mentioned subcomponents. Of course, you have subcomponents in a, a drawing, but what if those subcomponents also have drawings of their own? You know, will it gather them up as well? Yeah. So when you just save the drawing, it's it's going just top down from that drawing to all of its component references. So it won't see any subcomponent drawings. Uh, but hey, Scott Wheeler, I think you asked the question about pack and go. Guess what? They put it into pack and go. So when you go into the pack and go. go command, you'll see an option for saving as the previous. And there you go. It's a one-stop shop for taking your uh, whole top level assembly, all the subcomponents, all the sub drawings, and generating that prior version package that you can then share uh, with your uh, with whoever downstream needs to get that. So really clever implementation of that. Awesome. All right. So Brad, we have, uh, we have just a few more minutes. Uh, do you have any other quick enhancements to share today? Um, yeah, I actually almost forgot about these two. Let's go, uh, let's go <laughs> back to the drawings. I've got a couple more quick demos for you here. And, uh, I think in this next clip that we're going to see here, yeah, I've got the handlebar mechanism up here and I want to put a note on this drawing view. So let's insert a note. And no surprise here, we've done this for a long time, the ability to put a custom property, just hit link to property over in the property manager. And then you can get a property like a file name or part number, or description, whatever. But what's new is that dialogue can now stay persistent. So I can build up these compound notes that mix text, multiple properties and so on. So let's get the, let's get the description. Let's go get the, the component weight. Let's throw that together in one note, all done in one step. So that's really nice, cuts down on some, some manual steps. But where this really pays off now is let's say I go change the configuration of that drawing view and you can see the properties all just update immediately. So no mistakes due to you know manual text en entry there. It's just all handled for me in one shot. That is a great enhancement, right? In terms of just allowing you to work faster, like <laughs> that, that just saves you so many clicks. But you know, one thing I, I think in that little vignette, that little demo you showed, uh, that made me a little bit nervous, I have to say, is how you change configurations. I feel like every every time you change, or at least you know, my experience often, you know, when you change change configurations on a, a drawing, it, it can be risky, right? You know, whenever I wind up doing that, I feel like I 
I'll, I'll end up with a, a bunch of, of dangling dimensions. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you've modeled for any period of time, you've probably come up with dangling dimensions before you delete a feature, <laughs> sure. add something and your dimensioning <laughs> scheme gets, uh, gets out of whack. So we've been able to deal with dangling dimensions on parts, you know, pretty well, but on drawings, it generally means delete and start over. What's new here, uh, let me switch the configuration of this drawing view. And you see there, I got a couple of dangling dimensions. Now all you have to do is right click and hit reattach. And this is great. It shows a red X. Here's a little pro tip, by the way, letter G magnifying glass. That's an old oldie bit of goodie, but that lets me zoom right in on that area and reselect a new attachment reference. And now that dimension's healed up. Let's do the same thing over here. Letter G, I can grab a new reference edge. And now it's uh, it's healed up that, that dimension. And it's super easy. Um, a really, really elegant workflow to attaching or reattaching those dangling dimensions. Super discoverable too. When in doubt, right click. There it is. Yeah. And so when you right click it, it just says reattach, right? Mm -hmm. So does does that new reattach feature though, does it only work on dangling dimensions or, or can you use it elsewhere? Well, I kind of think it's a bonus feature here it, because it it isn't restricted just to dangling dimensions. You can take any reference okay. dimension scheme and right click and begin to reattach. So imagine oh, your cool. uh, your dimension scheme changes for some reason. You change a dimension reference or whatever. You can just quickly go in and reattach. No deleting, no starting over. And that's really ultimately what you want to get to, um, not having to recreate work. Very cool. So, so Brad, we mentioned we've we've talked to, in a few different regards now about cloud services, right? How, how does cloud services amplify what SolidWorks users can do with their drawings? Uh, heading into 2024? Yeah, well, right away, I think revisioning. Um, mm -hmm. Manual revisioning can be really tricky when you have to manage all the references of the parts and assemblies that go with the drawing. So cloud services just does does revisioning. Uh, it's, it's a breeze for that. But downstream of that, you know, you think about um, when you revision something, well, what about the title block? So the title block and uh, the revision block, well, that automatically gets populated because that data is just carried along automatically. So that's nice. That reduces any kind of errors due to manual text entry. And there's some other cool utilities too. Here's one, for example, this, this drawing compare utility that's in cloud services that will visually overlay the prior rev and the current rev. So you can, you can use this little slider bar to go back and forth and highlight either in red or in green what's new or different or changed between two drawing revs. So there's just some really super slick ways to uh, to handle the otherwise kind of mundane tasks of managing drawing revisions. Super exciting. Well, Brad, thank you so much for jumping on. You covered uh, three major areas of, of SolidWorks 2024 with sheet metal, structures, and drawings. Uh, so yeah, we, we greatly appreciate it. Yeah, had a blast doing it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. You know, at, at its core, SolidWorks is a fantastic mechanical design automation tool, right? One of the biggest reasons, though, that it's earned this reputation is for its assemblies functionality. You know, seeing how components interact inside a system with rules and constraints and, you know, the ability to run analyses like collision detections. These are all remarkable aspects of what's made SolidWorks so useful to engineers all these years. And to help us reveal some of the best of what's new in SolidWorks assemblies inside of SolidWorks 2024, I would like to welcome on Jesse Sprague to this launch episode of SolidWorks Live. Jesse, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for having me. 100%, man. So Jesse, what are some ways SolidWorks users can create and manage assemblies smarter and faster in SolidWorks 2024? Yeah, I mean, you you set me up pretty well. I think assemblies are always one of those core things of of SolidWorks, right? You're always building little bits, putting them together, right? It's always like a, that Lego scenario that seemingly every engineer has kind of started <laughs> with, right? We all start with Legos, and then you graduate to CAD, and then you start putting things back together like Legos again. Yeah, um, and there's there's a ton of tools in in SolidWorks that really do kind of make it feel like putting Legos together, right? You've got alt drag things together or just control select and you can get to your mates and things like that. Um, but I've got a few enhancements that that we can take a look at here. And the first of which falls right into that, uh, that category. Um, and that is mate references. And mate references are one of those things that I always find 
it really makes it feel like Legos, right? You can preset some idea of what the component is going to do once it gets into the assembly. Um, you'll find that in 2024, this is enhanced even more so. First of all, the performance is very snappy, so you'll find that very quick. Uh, however, you'll also find that there's an option there, that checkbox that just went by that lets you set this per name. Um, so what that allows us to do is sort of pre-filter our pre-filtering, if you if you will, to try to build more smarts into that component uh, so that when it gets where it needs to go, it already has a better idea of what it's going to do when it gets there. Yeah, that's so cool. So like you mentioned, mate references, and, and I love, we were talking before the show about this, you know, uh, mate references is, is a great area to, to introduce in this sort of show because, uh, you know, while it might not be net new to SolidWorks 2024 in its entirety, right? In a lot of cases, you know, we have we have over 300 pe over 300 concurrent viewers on YouTube, many more on LinkedIn, and you know, hopefully, over 100,000 will watch this uh, this episode within a year. Um, it, it often you often find in conversation that it is a new feature to someone, to many people, like yeah. just just mate references. Now we're sort of making them like more configurable in, in, a, in a sort of uh, in a sort of neat way in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll notice that you can kind of, because it's like by name now, you'll notice that you can, you can pick like a little, that little dialogue popped up. So the, the example in the, the what's new um, literature is, is a good one, you know, a knob that has multiple positions. I want to bring it in and have it snap, but oh, I want it to snap to, uh, you know, sec, uh, uh, to the fourth um, section on this or the fifth section on this. You've just got a lot more control and convenience and some extra speed. So definitely some nice enhancements for that. And to your point, Sean, if you have not used mate references before, it's a great time to start because you've got even more speed and control over that. So uh, definitely a cool one to to check out. And in this case, you know, falls right under both of our categories or our, our high level topics, smarter and faster in, in this case. So what do we have here? Uh, so it looks like we are our next uh, our next area of enhancement uh, is sort of similar uh, in the way of you know this this area of the software has existed before, but we've enhanced it enhanced it, and maybe it's an area of the software that isn't often used. I'm sure a lot of people uh, here in the chat today uh, maybe haven't used it before component references. It looks like it's getting some some love in 2024. Yeah, reference info is not always something that you're you're using on a regular basis, but I think probably with this year's edition, it will get used more often. Um, I think metadata probably in general is one of those things that it needs to be as easy to input as possible, right? It's just one of those trivial little things that seems to get forgotten a lot of times. But with the updates to component reference information for this year, you'll find that you can very easily access them uh, just simply by right clicking and and you'll get access to everything sort of in a, in a nice little table view. So you'll be able to add in all that information in one, one swoop, if you like, without having to go one by one by one by one, adding in that information. Um, so, you know, we've, we've talked about throughout this whole show that the job that R&D has done in, in just removing friction and things, right? Making things easier and more accessible. Um, that one is is without a doubt one of those things. And, and like I said, again, with with metadata, I think that's one thing that's particularly important um, is that it's it's easy to edit. Um, so, you know, you can see within that table view, you're able to just uh, copy and paste and add things in in bulk, if you will. Um, and it can come in really valuable, you know, in, the, in this case with um, several similar components, uh, or identical components, really, to be able to mark off this one's a front one, this one's a back one, uh, just reduces the the chance of an error happening, right? You're adding in clarity without much extra work, uh, which I find pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's like it's like John said, you know, if, if you have a, a simple statement like that, right? Uh, we're, we're we're looking to improve performance. Uh, you know, you're upping clarity, uh, right? In, in a software package, usually that's tends to be a good thing, yeah. right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> So, um, you know, Jesse, earlier in this episode, uh, and I, I kind of asked the same question uh, a moment ago to Brad on his topic of drawings. Uh, but, you know, we saw Mark reveal a really neat new capability, right? That enhancement that allows SOLIDWORKS users to save files as a previous release so that you can, you know, open and edit the files. And I know Brad gave a little bit of a way, right? And, and the fact that you can do it, you can do it with sub subcomponents. Uh, so we know uh, in some way that we can save as previous release with assemblies, but are there any, any more details you want to give us uh, just to get us extra excited about saving as previous release uh, with assembly files? 
Yeah, I mean, first of all, Sean, you and I have been around the SolidWorks community for long enough to know, right, that this is one you've been asked a million times. And it was Huge. one of those <laughs> one of those ones where it's like, it's probably just the nature of CAD software, right? I don't, I, I, my answer was always, I don't foresee this, this changing, right? It's just kind of <laughs> the way it is. And first of all, I just love that the way it is means absolutely nothing to SolidWorks R&D. They just go and <laughs> yeah. know how to do it. Uh, so amazing that that's, that's there, obviously something that, that people have been looking to do for forever. So very cool. Um, but yeah, there are some specifics, uh, that kind of apply to assembly. So as, as Brad mentioned, you know, uh, references are very important with drawings as with assemblies as well. So, um, when you're looking to, to back save an assembly, um, one of the things that I, I like about that is in the dialogue box. So as you, as you go to save. Uh, you'll I believe you'll we have a we have a, we have a clip for this, right? Uh, oh, sure, yeah. Just yeah. saving his previous release. If we if we could show that uh, within assemblies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and again, it's it's similar to drawings. Um, so you can picture it in your head. But yeah, so you've got the the option to check that on to grab all of your referenced files as well, um, which is nice. You can add a, a prefix or a suffix. But the thing that I love about this is when you open this back in the other version, you know, you might expect some kind of you know, dumb solids or something maybe, but mm -hmm. it's not that it's, it's the SolidWorks file. Um, so you'll see that the, the explode views come through, the configurations are working, all of the mates are retained. It, it is a SolidWorks back save. It's not some, you know, kind of trickery in the background that it's just a step file that's cloaked as a, as a SolidWorks file. You know, it retains all of that good information that you need when you save that back. Uh, and of course, to Brad's point, there's a checkbox in the, in the pack and go that will allow you to just choose a drop down. What, what version you want and ship that out as well. So very easy to use. And I mean, in our testing, it's worked really, really well. I'm, I'm really impressed. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a huge, huge point. Um, so I'm glad we, glad we covered it. Uh, another, another thing about that uh, particular piece of, of functionality, uh, right. If like, and I'm sure this, this question will come up, it may have come up today in the chat and maybe I missed it, but, um, you know, what happens if, if you have like a, a net new feature or feature that you can't save back, right. Um, we present a dialogue box, right? In that scenario where if it is something new and you're saving back to your releases, uh, you know, let's say it wasn't in, um, you know, 2022, we'll, we'll kind of alert you to that, right? Yeah, yeah, there's some messaging for that. And that was always my argument, you know, as to how how would this even work, right? Because there's there's features that didn't exist when that software was, yeah. was um was created. So how would you save that back? But you know, they've kind of worked a way around that to say, okay, well, you can't you can't access that if it doesn't exist, but uh, you can still get the file to to work. Very cool. Super exciting. You know, uh, yeah, before we move on to, to our, to our kind of next question here, I, I know this is one that, you know, if you, if you're able to go out to, uh, one of our VAR events, which are happening all about the globe, uh, that one is assuredly going to get an applause. Standing <laughs> like, ovation. A hundred yeah. Yeah, percent of the events, there'll be a standing ovation. For sure. So, so Jesse, I wanted to ask, you, you know, what are, what are some of your favorite things that, that we can do with assemblies in SolarWorks heading into 2024, uh, using now the power of of cloud services. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, huge announcement. I'm I'm really excited about that too. But it, you use the the phrase game changer at the at the beginning of the the uh, program. I hate that phrase <laughs> because, <laughs> because because it seems like everybody on the internet now uses the phrase game. Like I wear a watch now, and it's been a game changer. It's a game changer. Everything's they game say changer. it's a game changer. It doesn't it, take much what? to change the game, but it, this 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 right. really alters the game here. I, I don't know what games you're playing, but um, <laughs> but to your point, I mean, I I feel like we have a leg to stand on here. Um, it, it really does kind of feel like that. So. I mean, the th the thing is with assemblies, obviously, there's a lot of things to track, right? You you've got files that that are all important to know where they are, um, and and what they're doing. I am not very good at file management, admittedly, and I've done enough tech support to know that I am not alone in that. So I think the thing that I'm most excited about this system is just the ease of finding things, right? So you can search and find anything. Um, and I have adopted that method a lot more in, in not just SolidWorks, but just in daily practice, uh, because the amount of data that we're dealing with on a daily basis is just expanding so rapidly yep. uh, that the 
the methods that I had used in the past of manually browsing for things are just not not cutting it anymore. Um, and again, my skills are poor in that area in the first place. So I'm not very organized. So being able to search for that information and find all of the references and being able to tag that and filter that and get to everything that I need to get to and also have all of that functionality just built right into SolidWorks, you know, right in my task pane. I have been absolutely loving that. Um, I think people get a little bit, you know, nervous or scared when it comes to the the adjustment there because it's like, okay, well, it's it's an object based system and it it sounds kind of scary. Like, where do my files go? Um, but it really gives you a ton of flexibility on the other end uh, of being able to put things in folders, right? We just call them bookmarks instead, or move them around and not lose any of the stuff that you need, right? Everything is still right under your fingertips, no matter if you have a small amount of data, or if you have a huge amount of data, it doesn't matter anymore, right? It, it really doesn't matter how much data you have. It's always right there and available to you um, and available to you while you're working in SolidWorks. So that's, that's what gets me excited about that, that part of it. Totally, man. So, hey, before you go, you know, I have to ask you about Visualize. So just for everyone <laughs> watching uh, at home or at the office, uh, a lot of the renderings that you saw of the Bowhead RX uh, were made by Jesse. Uh, Jesse is amazing uh, at SolidWorks Visualize. So we, we have to talk about that before you leave. Uh, so, Jesse, just just real quick, you know, what are what are your top three favorite enhancements in terms of what's new in SolidWorks Visualize? I will blitz through them as fast as I can. I <laughs> um, yeah, there's some great enhancements in Visualize. Obviously, I'm I'm a huge fan of uh, Visualize and what you can do with it. Excellent way to reuse your CAD data. Um, for this year, we have a whole new format when it comes to appearance formats. So the library itself, the entire library is reorganized uh, through this DSPBR format. So the appearance format is all new. Um, this format is fantastic because it's super capable, but it's also scaled down and filtered well. So you'll notice that when you're dragging and dropping appearances in, they're just filtered down to the appearances that uh, the, the settings that you would need. But, you know, you can see, for example, in the full enterprise model, it is very a very capable model. Um, what I really love about it as I've been using it is just the drag and drop functionality that, you know, you can work with texture maps very easily, either with a single drag and drop or multiple drag and drop. Uh, it will auto load maps in for you. Very easy and flexible format to use. And I've absolutely been loving it. Um, the, the capability to make some tweaks to maps directly in the software is amazing. They've updated all of this. Uh, so we can, you know, fine tune the appearance um, once you get it in, even if it's uh, an appearance maps that are um, that are already kind of pre-baked. So tons of great functionality built into that. And that has got a whole bunch of cool stuff that's coming that we'll save for another conversation, but um, but a, a great format that's been added. Um, the next thing that I, I really like about this release of the software is the manipulator itself has been updated. So really two things that you touch every time you go into a project in Visualize have been uh, updated in a major way. Uh, highlighting on every little uh, piece of the manipulator is, is huge. It's more helpful than you would think. And you'll find that the whole manipulator has been kind of condensed into one. So scaling and rotating and uh, translating all built into one single manipulator now. And we've added the functionality to use some keyboard shortcuts with this as well. So you can see you can activate that just kind of on the fly, which I will use the phrase that I don't like, but is a game changer. Um, I, I use that constantly throughout this process of building the, the uh, renderings for this year. And the cool thing is it works in both local and global coordinates. So you have total flexibility to move things around sort of at will. And some of the more complex renderings that I did this year were just, you know, wouldn't be possible without that tool that I used this year to set some of those up. So great stuff there. Really enjoying those updates to the, the manipulator. <clears throat> now. Uh, there's a few more that I, I kind of had a tough time picking um, what I would choose here. But the last one that I'll mention is the uh, sunlight environment. The sunlight environment has been updated for this year with ease. So you just kind of right click, add in a sunlight environment, and it's got all of the settings in there that you would need to tweak for this. You can rotate it around. You can select a face to say which way is north. Obviously, you can set the, the time of day and where you are. You can copy and paste your coordinates into it. Um, it's a, it's a very easy system to use, which I like. And the coolest part is it's kind of built into, uh, the updated wizard for animations. So you can very easily make, you know, a cool solar sweep or, uh, take a look at your product throughout a, um, you know, in a certain spot throughout the year or anything like that with just a handful of clicks. So really cool, 
really cool system. Um, I had I had a ton of fun building, probably more fun than I should be allowed to have at work, building the uh, the rendering images for this year's project. And it's it's been the most effortless version of the software to use so far. So thrilled with it. So cool. Uh, well, Jesse, thank you so much for for jumping on. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll tease this a little bit later uh, as we get towards the end of the episode here. Uh, but uh, yeah, our our live viewers will be seeing a lot of you once again in February, right? With with three D Experience Royal coming up. That's so right. uh, if if we uh, you know hopefully we'll see you before then. But uh, but yeah, look forward to that. So thanks again, Jesse. Yeah, back in the saddle. Can't wait. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Everyone, everyone in the chat on YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, thank you, all of you, uh, for tuning in out there. Hey, before I move into a proper close and preview of what's next for us here at SolidWorks, I want to extend another huge thank you to Christian Bag, Sankit, uh, Roger, Tatiana, and the entire amazing team uh, that you're seeing here at, at Bowhead Corp. So, you know, Bowhead Corp, I think all of you would agree, you know, Bowhead Corp is the real star of the 2024 release. They were so kind in letting us into their facilities uh, and showcasing how SolidWorks and cloud services helped make amazing outdoor experiences possible for each and every one of their customers. So I absolutely implore you, head to bowheadcorp.com to check out all of their outdoor adaptive mobility innovations and follow them on their awesome Instagram page today. Now, if you are new, to the SolidWorks YouTube channel, and you got some value out of watching today, please remember to subscribe. Uh, SolidWorks launch season, it comes once a year, of course, but we are here on SolidWorks Live throughout the year, providing tips on how to design inside SolidWorks, most of which uh, of these tips are actually delivered by industry members uh, of our worldwide community. And this brings me to the third theme, really, of SolidWorks 2024, one we really haven't spoken much uh, directly about today, since we've been so focused on smarter and faster, and that's together. So we'll be back in just a few months to explore how SolidWorks and our entire portfolio can help you work with others without common hassles. You know, you can learn how you can break out of silos with analysts, uh, manufacturing, and and much more uh, with this episode, which will be the official second part of what's new in 2024. And speaking of together. Two of our biggest community events of the year are coming up, one next month and the other, I just teased it with Jesse, is in February, and I know you guys know what that is. Uh, so first, this October, uh, so next month, tune in for the community-run yearly event bringing together designers and engineers everywhere, and that is Slug Me 8. So that is the SolidWorks largest user group meeting ever, the 8th edition. See, I I'm, I'm very sure I got that right. Please check me in the chat there. Uh, but this this live streamed extravaganza will feature community build projects, uh, SolidWorks technical presentations, and uh, frankly, a lot of laughs. Uh, so be sure to tune in for some of the best edutainment. Oh, Jesse likes that word. Uh, best edutainment SolidWorks has to offer. Uh, and yeah, February. You know, it's not it's not too far away. Uh, we're almost to we're almost in October here. Uh, but this this upcoming February, 3D Experience World is fully back in person. So join us in Dallas, Texas for hands-on lectures and training on SolidWorks, uh, simulation, many other topics, uh, breakout sessions by the, the best technical presenters in our space, and uh, industry networking, of course, like you'll never find uh, anywhere else. So you can check it out today at 3dexperienceworld.com. But yeah, thank you so much uh, to all of you. Thank you to our entire production team, as well as our presenters today. And once again, like, subscribe, and we will see you soon.